Global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Global Happenings today. Is there, if there's anyone I ever know, especially in the area or arena of politics, that usually go opposite direction each time a news comes out, it's always said the likes of Ibokwe. But this time around, Joe Ibokwe is actually hitting the nail exactly on the head, the way it is. And it's not carrying his as being God. One would have expected that he would be rejoicing over the ticket being clinched by Atiku Abubakar. But hear what he has to say. A lot of Nigerians have been reacting to this. In fact, some persons believe that this has gone beyond PDP politics, politics now. But this is a case of the game of the North against the South. Well, before we go into the news proper, I would like you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Beside it, you see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on need to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. Well, it's no longer news that former Vice President Atiko Abubakar has clinched the presidential ticket of the People's De Democratic Party in the primaries. That's primaries election that was recently conducted at the Moshud Abiola Stadium in Abuja. According to reports, Atiku pulled 371 votes to defeat River State Governor Yeson Wiki, who was his closest rival in the poll. Shortly after, Atiku was declared as the winner of the primaries polls, all the Progressive Congress Chief 10, Lagos State Chapter, Chief Joe Iboku took to his social media account to react to the development. Iboku believes that the opposition party made a huge mistake by picking Atiku Abubakar. According to the politician, PDP should have considered the fact that it is the turn of the South. He's even saying it's the turn of the Southwest. There is a turn of the South to produce the next president. PDP has committed a political blunder, an unmitigated error by picking Atiko Abubakar as the presidential candidate, knowing fully well that power goes to the South. Okay, South, not Southwest, now South in 2023, according to our unwritten rules, which is very true. Nigerians have been writing to that. Honestly, before this whole, before we go into what Nigerians are saying, let's just look at this critically. A lot of people have been saying this, the likes of uh, Edwin Clark, Pa Edwin Clark, and so many others, even uh, Pa, pa, pa Adebanjo and the rest. They all believe that this whole thing, by virtue of our tribalism, our virtue of multi-ethnicity, by virtue of the many nations embedded in Nigeria, and by virtue of lopsided appointment given to uh, uh, the other uh, regions in this dispensation, one would expect that the best thing to do right now is to ensure that the South takes it, though it's unwritten, all right, it's not written in our constitution, but there's this verbal understanding, the same verbal understanding that made the likes of Obola Ahmed Tunubu allegedly agree to package Bola Ahmed, uh, to package Buhari to Nigerians with the hope that it will be handed over to him, free course on him that come 2023, alas, may not really come to play in that manner if events begin to unfold the way it did in PDP. Now, one would have expected that, you know, in an honorable manner, let this whole thing flow the way it ought to flow. But this is not what we are seeing. Rather, we are seeing a game where it's more like divide and rule, where southerners are divided amongst themselves. In the bid of that divide and rule, the northerners are waiting to pick the lose, the lose change, to pick the lose, the lose benefits. Now, who would have expected that in PDP, Tambua at the last minute will step down and give all his vote to Atiko. And that's the same Tambua, who is a close ally to uh, the Governor Yeson Wiki. The question is, why didn't Governor Yeson Wiki have his close ally from the South as well? With the hope that after immersing his or his vote, we'll give same to Atiko. I mean, to give, give same to um, Yeson Wiki when it mattered the most. But there was no one to do that for him. That is dirty politics for you. But Nigerians have been reacting, and people are really saying that going by this, the Southerners may not find it funny if this ticket is also ceded to uh, the Northerner again in APC. And don't forget that uh, the likes of uh, Carlo, uh, Ojuzo Carlo, had actually begged the president's presidency and the APC to please see the, the next ticket uh, of uh, presidency to Northeast so that it would just be Northeast versus Northeast. It would be very interesting. 
Now, are you saying that other tribes, other nations in the country are just there for the nation's sake, are just there to become catalysts to hold the nations together, or are just there to take the benefit of being in a nation and not enjoying the benefit of being a national in that nation? Come on. Look for the benefit of democracy. If you are to go by the issue of popularity, if you are to go by the issue of the uh, pop population, then we don't have democracy because we it's almost non fact because of the number of Nigerians and all that. If you go by population, they not be carried a day. So we have to, so that nobody, no tribe gets disgruntled, let there be some sort of understanding for the benefit of all. Nigerians have started reacting. Let's feel that pause. This one here said, Ag Oga, you're making a, a big mistake. I thought you would have said that it's the turn of Southeast, not South. Are you not the are you not the greatest blunder? Excuse me. And that person here is saying, your party convention is what everybody's waiting for. Don't poke notes to another person's, another party's successful and conducted presidential primary. And that person here is saying, I will vote for Atiko. And that person here is saying, I think this is one of the first time I'm agreeing with you, Mr. Ibokwe. And that person here is saying, the fear of Atiko is the beginning of wisdom. And that person here is saying, how? What impact has he made to actualize Igbo aspirations? And the person here is saying, Mr. Joe, you have a problem. The earlier you are, you are, you check in the right place. The presidential election is about Nigeria, not about your destiny helper. You are showing your emptiness to the world that you did not merit whatever position Asiwaju gave you, but a favor. This one is a beggar on politics, so that when Bath becomes the president, you, you consider as DG or minister. Nigeria is in trouble until we get rid of this whole thing and honestly the way the whole thing is going is not getting interesting and uh, you can imagine the likes of a uh, senior advocate of nigeria uh kiyama festus kiyama saying oh our regular person congratulations is a regular person he p he was there in 2015 he was there in 2019 now he's also here in 2023 come on now we ask ourselves a question in 20 in over 200 million Nigerians, is it that we have just these few politicians who keep rotating themselves taking now, the, the amazing part is that they tell nigerians what what or who should we should vote for the way they arrange the way elections is such that we can't originally pick anybody we like they only show us okay from this party this is what we're going to vote for so they agree to who will come in and technically speaking our votes don't count if it continues in this light there will be a lot of disgruntled element if it continues in this light and nothing is ceded to the south it's not just disgruntlement. The the level of agitation that will follow suit afterwards. You are still talking about IPOB. They're talking about uh, uh, Oduduwa Republic. Niger Delta will show up, and many other and many others will show up because it it doesn't tell well. It make it, it it's looking as if the country is in the hands of a few, and it's that few that determines the fate of the all, which is about two hundred million Nigerians, which is not fair. That's my personal opinion. Let's meet in a conversation what's a take.